Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Air Tycoon Online, and um, yeah, we're really starting to tick now. Um, as you guys can see, we are at 1.8 billion in profit on the upticks, uh, though the downticks are still um, not doing so well at about, you know, just around a billion for the worst ones. Um, the worst one, of course, being 0.5, being just 100k, but you know, the average is about, you know, 1.4 billion now. Or about, you know, 15 billion in the last year, which is pretty good. Um, so anyway, aside from that, we are still a long way off uh, catching up to number two and three on the leaderboards. But I am closing the gap between me and the second guy quite quickly. Um, I'm not really interested in looking at his profit, but I am interested in looking at PWC's profit because this is the guy I ultimately want to catch. And I think it'd be quite an achievement to do so. And... I do have some extra credits this game, so I'm just going to spend the credits to look at his route information and other information. This is his uptick, so it's approximately double mine. Um, it's just over double mine. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. And if we take a look at his routes, I'm going to sort by most profitable and take a look at this too. Um, mostly because I'm going to want to kind of figure out which cities are most profitable to him. It's looking to me like Rome... Uh, Moscow are one of his most profitable hubs, and I'm going to be remembering this uh, to compete with him. So yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm not going to like take too many, about a few pages, because that will give me enough of a point to have something to work off of. Another thing I'm curious by is how much is he spending on other things? So as you guys can see, he's not an airport player. He probably owns a single airport there making 9k, but he's also spending very little on service investment and advertising investment. If we take a look at my company, as a proportion of my size, I'm spending much more in service and more in advertising as well. And what that tells me is I have the potential to grow into a much bigger company than him uh, because I will have much higher service investment. Um, I know my limit for planes is about 2,000. I can't have more than 2,000 planes because I'm not active enough. Um, to maintain a fleet of 2,000 aircraft or more. Right now, I only have 800, so I'm well below that. And I've also taken a lot of good demand already. So, for example, Singapore is basically capped out. There's not very many cities left that I need to take to Singapore. And a lot of the routes I've taken to Singapore are already getting extremely small. And, like, there's basically almost every city in the world has already been connected to a city like Singapore for me. Um, and yeah, uh, so a lot of the hubs I have, like Guangzhou, for example, are similar. Um, of course, there's some cities in Africa and some cities, you know, just spread throughout the world, which are still being waiting to be taken to places like Guangzhou and Beijing, for example. But these being slightly smaller hubs in Singapore will probably never see the same treatment of having every single city taken to it. Um. Los Angeles, on the other hand, is a city which I have been trying to take every single city to. Um, any exceptions, such as Cano to Los Angeles, for example, are more or less ones I've forgotten uh, or not been able to take, or I have not gotten a chance to slot request in them yet, uh, like all these cities which I will eventually want to connect um, to good old Los Angeles. And the reason for that is Los Angeles is so big now, I've noticed that Los Angeles can fill just about any plane. So let's take a look at this. Um, Los Angeles to Izmir. A 300 city in Turkey, Boeing 747SP, rarely even ever thinks about not being completely full, except for the, uh, of course, 0.4 month, which is known to be the worst out there, uh, where even a city like Ayapo, as you guys can see, is basically just locked at full. And yeah, the 747 SP at a lot of these range breakpoints are not very profitable. Like this range breakpoint only makes 4K for SP, but that is also a stopover route, so it's not even bad. Um, so, okay, this, this route, LA to Mosul, for some reason has a big variation. But if I were to guess, it's because Mosul had a overflowing airport, not because the route is bad. Um, Tbilisi, same story. As you guys can see, just about any random ass city which Los Angeles is connected to, um, is just full, period. Um, and basically what that's going to let me do is, if there's a city 
with an airport. I'm going to connect it to Los Angeles. There's not a lot of cities with airports, which I've missed. Um, but there's still a bunch, as you guys can see. As airports open, of course, I'm not always completely up to date. Um, yeah, as a lot of these cities open, um, open the airports, finally, you know, I'm going to be starting to make those routes. Um, so yeah, that's Los Angeles. I've also started to open new hubs such as Singapore, or not Singapore, such as Hong Kong. Um, though I've just started to expand out of this. Um, and yeah, basically this episode, I guess I'll continue to expand out of uh, my newer hubs like Hong Kong and potentially open up some new ones just to keep, uh, keep my options open in what kind of routes I have to make. Um, yeah, now I'm still using mostly 747 SPs for my expansion but at the same time um one of my plans so to say is to go through a lot of these as sp routes um and just find slightly bigger ones and replace these with uh 747 um i don't want to say proper but 747 uh like what is this baku like as you guys can see like this kind of route never vary very like varies from completely full which means i could probably put a bigger plane on it um so you know i'll put a 747 300 on that route instead um this is kind of what i intend to be doing like just going through the routes checking to see if they're always full and if they are uh for an sp um throwing a 747 300 on it and as you can see this route is not always full so i will just leave the sp uh, B, same with this route, um, it has some variation, and yeah, as tedious as this is, um, like, this has variation too, but it's competition, so I don't mind competing with it, um, yeah, I'm no longer, like, a small enough company, so I have to be really sensitive about whether, um, whether I'm competing or not, uh, yeah, like, I can just, uh, kind of, ignore the ooh, see this is not a route i want to switch away because the sp has uh the speed to fly an extra schedule of course once the 747 sp is basically retired um i forgot to check if that's always full or not and it's not so um no upgrade but yeah you guys kind of get the point it's a little bit tedious um also if i see competition with pwc uh, I basically guaranteed to want to upgrade the plane to a more satisfying model um, just to compete with him and kind of take some of his load factor uh, because, yeah, I, I seriously need to compete with that guy before he becomes completely overblown. Um, so, yeah, when I see PWC as the competitor, I will upgrade that to a larger 747. Um, regardless, um, I'm really curious. Are these locked? No, these are not quite locked yet. Um, yeah, that's definitely not locked at 100%. Uh, I'm just curious to see if any of these direct routes are getting locked at 100%, and they don't seem to be, so I'll leave that be. Um, Osaka to Beijing, at Beijing to Yayund. Nope, that's actually not locked at 100% load factor, so we won't be replacing that. Whereas Hamilton to London. You know, additionally, this is not locked at 100%, but just due to the competition with PWC, to kind of maintain that, I'm going to be replacing that. Um, also, for 747-100s, um, I would like to start replacing ones which are dealing with competition. Um, but I just have the slight problem where I, I can't really find many new routes for, for 747s. So, for example, here's my 747-100 list, of course. Um, I want to replace all of these with 747-300s, but then what do I do with the 747-100s, right? Um, let me see if I open some new hubs, if I'll be able to find homes for them. Like, for example, Hong Kong. I could make stopovers with 747-100s. For example, Prague um, to Hong Kong, and then Hong Kong to... 
uh, we can just compete or something like Quatcola Tanagu. We could do something like this, but I, f I feel like I'll have difficulty, but I guess I'll do my best by opening new hubs as I'm unable to find any more new stopovers. I think that's actually probably a decent idea. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start moving a lot of the 747-100s um, on to become 300s and then just finding new routes, I guess, for the 747-100s. I think they're easier to fill than I think. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to keep doing this for a while, you know, keep the slot request rolling and all that. And uh, But before then, I need to just pick a new hub. So um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, Hong Kong. Let's take a quick look at Amsterdam. Uh, it's a bit crowded. So I think I might go for something like New York. Uh, yeah, there's tons of routes available. Uh, just not a ton of good ones. The good ones are kind of limited, uh, which is a bit of a problem. Um, let's take a look at Chicago. Chicago is freaking enormous, by the way. Uh, and it's also got relatively loose competition. Like, I immediately see some options, but it's also kind of lacking having two major players hubbed in there. Um, you know, why is Chicago so massive? Do you see this? It's 1,050... And that's also 1,050, actually. So New York is also freaking massive and has less competition. So that's always an option. Uh, Shanghai is also massive and has almost no competition, if we see this. Uh, but it's not very big. Uh, take a look at that. It's only about 800, 850. Um, or we could go for something like San Francisco, which also has a borderline no competition whatsoever. Um but also in exchange for kind of size. Uh, like San Francisco has a lot of great direct routes to it, but lacks stopovers. Uh, Shanghai has the same boat, but it's a little bit bigger. Um, so I might go for Shanghai, given how freaking high I've accidentally raised the name value of it to. Um, and then focus on North America later, I guess. So we're opening this. And boom, that means we're going to focus on Shanghai routes next. And let me just fill out my slot requests. So we're going to go for Hong Kong. Um, and some of these cities we wanted to connect to, to Los Angeles. And yeah, I'll be right back. Alright guys, we are back. Time to replace more of these least um, 747, which are getting old. And should really be only used for Monopoly routes. I'm not going to return them because I don't have a plane. Like, I want to keep expanding the number of routes I have. And that is not an easy task when you have to um, be getting rid of planes at the same time that you're trying to expand. So instead of getting rid of these hundreds of least 747s, instead, um, I'm going to be basically just... You know, whoa, look at the variation on some of these routes. Um, yeah, basically by replacing these with 747-300, it should lower some of that variation because these are all competition routes with PWC, as you guys can see. And my higher satisfaction should result in much higher load factors. Um, yeah, once these are all kind of set and done. Um, he does have most of these routes also as stopovers where I'm running them direct. So unfortunately, the effect of me replacing these with 300 is going to be muted. Hello, Fufu, ni hao ma? Ah, interruptions, interruptions. Okay, yeah, we're carrying on here. Um, yeah, as you guys can see, I have a few 747-300s left. I'm just going to hold on to them um, just in case I want to do something different with them. But yeah, we just opened the Shanghai hub. So let's go ahead and make some nice Shanghai stopover routes so not really too sure what I'm gonna be aiming for here but yeah I'm just gonna be throwing some 747 100s on any nicer routes we see so like that for example um, <coughs> yeah there's a ton and a ton of options available here uh, here's the reason also why I kept some 747s in my uh, pocket basically is because can i reach daegu yeah sweet um 
is because some of them will require a slightly longer range, which of course the 100s do not have. Um, I think though in general I'm going to kind of struggle to make enough stopover routes with the 747-100s. Um, they of course have a really short range, which makes it difficult to find any untaken routes with them, but of course there are still some, like look at this, Tripoli, Shanghai, um, yeah, that's a pretty good stopover route, don't you think? Uh, Tripoli, well, definitely need some more, uh, schedules there, or not schedules, but that's five a week. What's direct? Is direct six a week? Because then I'm just not going to bother to stop it over. Yep. Um, what else? What else can we find here? I see Nairobi. I see Riyadh. Riyadh should definitely, could definitely be a s nice stopover route. Something like this. Um, this, something like this. Yes, yeah, so like Shanghai is a, basically a desert. I, I really expect a city like Shanghai to normally have more competition than there is in this Shanghai. So, yeah, we're just going to take advantage of that and kind of um, start expanding into it. There's tons of cities like that because this wor world is really strange in the sense that the biggest players, uh, just me, the number two guy in PwC, um, occupy such a huge proportion of the market that anywhere where we are not is basically abandoned. And for some reason, those guys really like medium-sized hubs. And what I mean by medium-sized hubs is hubs, for example, such as New Delhi or Mexico City or, you know, I could name more, but I can't think of them right now. Or like a slightly large cities, but not too big, like Moscow, Amsterdam, Rome, um, kind of middle tier size cities and they really really like them um and basically the result is that there are tons and tons and tons of medium sized routes or just like large size cities not even not even medium large size cities shanghai's your guangzhou's your hong kong's your um singapore's or even like those kind of like level of cities a lot of them are left kind of empty, which is nice. And then eventually, uh, what I find is that uh, a big guy will move in and then it'll not be empty anymore. Like when I moved into Singapore, that thing was just nearly completely empty. And then very soon after, um, what's this guy? The number two guy moved in and boom, it was no longer a great monopoly. Um, but for a little while, I had a extremely good time there. Um, Los Angeles was one of my first hubs, and it just had a lot of competition. Um, I didn't really realize that at the time, but I, I hadn't looked around at other cities besides my main hubs. So yeah, now that I'm finally kind of just ignoring uh, like my favorite cities like LA and um, London, though I have not ignored those in any sen sense of the matter, but instead I've you know just expanded out of them. There are tons and tons of routes just everywhere else that I, I, I don't have enough planes to take. I really don't. And I don't have enough slot requests to keep the slot requests rolling at the rate which I want to be taking these cities. Um, like, for example, uh, here in Paris, I want to make Port of Spain to Paris and then another stopping location. So we, you know, looking around, there's tons of options. Um, could do something like Mosul, but I prefer something a little bit bigger, like Tashkent, that's perfect, and you know, very nice, stop a route, even get five schedules a week, uh, very, very nice indeed. Yeah, so as you guys can see, like, just a, like a big city like Paris is, has, you know, by my standards, an extremely low amount of competition in this world, and that's just leaving me open to kind of freely expanding out of these cities, um, which is extremely nice for me. Um, and yeah, basically anybody playing this world besides me is probably having a decent time considering how many nice cities are available, but you just kind of have to know to take them. Um, though on the other hand, although there isn't a lot of competition, uh, the routes which 
you know, the numbered one guys are doing, like PwC. I think I think this is a much faster pace than normal. I really do. Um, like, I'm quite experienced at this game, and I don't think I've ever seen someone expand without being a obvious gemmer expand much faster than PwC is. So it's extremely respectable in that regard. Um, being one of the fastest, if not the fastest, um, expander I've ever seen, for lack of a better word. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's see if I can find a freaking stopover destination. Uh, seems like the Asian side, for some reason, has been taken quite thoroughly, whereas the other side is kind of fine, but you know what? We'll just take that. And then we have a ton of 747 SPs uh, to work with here. I'm not really sure what I'm going to want to do with them quite yet, but if 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 I like get tired of making routes or something, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use these 747 SPs to replace DC-8s um, and similar sized aircraft. And yeah, I'll just get rid of the DC-8s and therefore, you know, I won't have any airplanes sitting around doing nothing, which is kind of a thing which kind of annoys me, probably a little bit disproportionately more than it should. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot reach these cities despite them being very nice destinations. Uh, so yeah, that's seems like about it. Ooh. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be many cities I can take to Los Angeles. Just nothing's in range. Uh, what else do I have? Hong Kong and Shanghai are both sitting on slot requests. So we've got Beijing. Um, Beijing's got a ton of options on this side of the world. Like Buffalo to Beijing, and then we can find a stop somewhere. Um, like, I know this is competing, but the other half is not competing, so that's fine with me. I don't even know who, who I'm competing with, but yeah, very soon after I take a few more, uh, what I'm gonna call AFK hubs, so like so currently San Francisco, PwC just moved into Charlotte, by the way. Um, so yeah, I might want to start competing with that soon as well. But yeah, I'm going to start just moving into PwC's hubs. Um, uh, probably starting with Moscow and Rome, since they're in nice locations, and start competing with his best routes there. And yeah, just moving into one of his hubs after another, and just competing with every single route he has, with only the biggest aircraft. So I'm going to be basically competing... Um, with strictly aircraft the same size as uh, like 747, uh, the biggest one, whatever one available. And the mo main reason for that is because I don't really care too much about my own load factor. And I'm just going to be caring about getting his load factor to be low. That's basically going to be my only goal. And yeah, I think the best way to do that will be to be to use oversized aircraft to compete with him. Um, despite it losing me money as well. Um, but it should lose him a lot more because my satisfaction is so much higher. Um, I think that's finally going to come into play, which is super, super nice. Because um, for a long time now, I've been sitting on a much lower profit than him, mostly because of my service investment uh, levels, making me kind of grow at a borderline exponentially slower rate. And I think the importance of that is finally going to be diminished. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, on another note, um, as you guys can see, I'm kind of struggling to think of new routes I can make. Um, the few Asian hubs I have been using a lot, Beijing, Singapore, and Guangzhou, are being extremely capped out. Um, I guess I have Frankfurt in Europe. I kind of forgot about that. Um, yeah, I still have a ton of Frankfurt routes and Paris to make. Um, also, unfortunately, about these hubs is Frankfurt is shrinking for whatever reason. I mean, that's not a big deal, but I'm just running so low on actual de like destinations and slots. Um, yeah, basically, the way I like to play, right, is I like to save up a bunch of aircraft say 30 of them and then just schedule them all at once 
And the kind of problem with this is I run out of slots in the areas of the world I'm looking to make routes in. So for example, if I'm doing Europe, I'll run out of slots in Europe and then I'll have to do something else and then, yeah, or kind of stop playing for a while. And I don't like that. I like doing everything at once in big bursts. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, as you guys can see, like <laughs> this has been a really long episode, uh, but I would just kind of do what I'm doing now and scheduling a whole bunch of planes at once. Sometimes I do even more than I'm doing now, but because I'm talking, this is a little bit um, kind of exhausting. Uh, so yeah, I won't be at this for too long. But yeah, as you guys can see, I'm got, I've got tons and tons of routes to take. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if I should start competing on routes like this. I mean, that's 767. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to compete with. Um, yeah, when you reach the size that I have reached now is basically about the time where you should consider starting to use very large aircraft. Um, normally, I always recommend you use small aircraft that are guaranteed to get 100% load factor to grow as fast as you can. But once you reach about the size that I am now, you run into a very new problem. And that very new problem is great. Um, I could keep using smaller aircraft, but I just ran out of routes. And not only did I run out of routes, I don't have enough slots, and I, you won't have enough time in real life time. This is usually the biggest bottleneck to actually schedule all those damn planes. You'll obviously have enough slots if you spend a long enough time online waiting for slots and stuff like that. But that's just such a time consuming thing, even for somebody like me who has a lot of spare time. So yeah, I have full sympathies towards people who are busier than me. And in which case you should instead look to use big aircraft. Um, big aircraft on big monopoly routes. Um, I think what a lot of people don't realize is routes which don't seem very big are very big if you make them into stopovers. Um, I'll give an example being Shanghai to Bristol does not seem like a great route, but Shanghai to Bristol as a stopover half with another half connecting on to Australia or something suddenly is able to so easily fill a 747. Um, Barcelona to Indianapolis is not quite big enough to fill a 747. Give, make this thing into a stopover route, and all of a sudden you're easily able to fill a 747. Um, this is true for so many different routes, so many different cities. Um, if there's a route where you don't really want to make it into a stopover route because you feel it's kind of a waste, um, let me try and think of an example here. Uh, for example, Memphis to London. That route seems like a bit of a waste to make it into a stopover half because Memphis to London can probably fill so much of a bigger airplane than a 747. So instead then, make it Barcelona to Memphis to a city as close to Barcelona as you can get. And you'll still get five schedules a week instead of six or seven or something like that. So you don't lose out on much. This strategy works incredibly well and can be applied in many, many circumstances. And it works even better for routes which are farther away than Memphis is to London, especially when routes are around 10,000 K. So for example, Los Angeles to Sendai. Uh, not, not even Sendai, let's go Busan to make this uh, ex extra emphasize. Instead of going Busan to Los Angeles direct, I would go Los Angeles to Busan to Las Vegas or Phoenix, for example. This would probably get six schedules a week, whereas uh, Los Angeles to Busan would also only get six schedules a week, big flying direct. So you get that extra little bit of that route for free. And if you make sure for every single route you open, you check whether you are getting an extra schedule or not, you will make so much money by making these kind of imbalance stopover halves. I highly recommend it um, to anyone who is trying to push the most, absolute most out of their um, airline in this game. I it's only really useful when you're expanding, but um, later on you can be a little bit more relaxed because you just want to make the routes as fast as possible, but it's also still worth um, doing if it doesn't take you uh, much time.
so yeah anyways those are just some random tips about opening stopover routes at the end of the episode i don't know why i do it i should do this at the beginning because so many more people will hear it um it's really interesting to see kind of uh, my audience retention stats on youtube which you know i finally kind of have enough viewers to generate any real statistics which is kind of cool but anyways this has been a long, a long episode hopefully you guys enjoyed um just the one last thing i'm gonna keep these planes for scheduling later on today i'm kind of bored right now so just make sure all the prices are set correctly uh, anything on zero percent load factor will have 1.3 prices therefore as you guys can see uh, i spent the whole episode without setting any prices and boom they're all perfectly set anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time peace